Welcome to Women Advancing, where the voices of world-changing female leaders gather to share their journeys, their insights, their hopes and practical how-tos, and how they're achieving their goals and making the world a better place while doing so. I'm Catherine Byrne, and I'm the host and editor of womenadvancing.org and the Chief Growth Officer of Good Light Capital. So our conversation today is going to center around the bench and how, just how do we get that next generation of leaders lifted and soaring? Not just talking about it, but getting out of the way so they can. We're used to mentorship inside the workplace, but this story is about how a connection outside of work led to a rich relationship that expands to include both professional and personal arenas. We'll discuss two key questions that lead to impactful mentorship. How do you like to learn? And then given the exposure and opportunity for the next generation on the bench to ask, hey, can I join? It'll make all the difference in the world. Listen in and enjoy. Patricia Van Nostrand, Chief of Staff of Caden TV, and Natalie Landry, the VP of Marketing at NBC Universal Media. Welcome to Women Advancing's Bench Series. And thank you in advance for making the time to talk to us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I know you're busy bees. <laughs> As are you, as are you. Yes, yes, yes. But let's jump into it because I really want everybody to kind of get a sense of your paths and then we'll do a deeper dive. When you're looking at your path, do me a favor, if you would, and think about a time, especially when there was an injection and intersection with a mentor that ended up really creating a shift and impacting your career overall. Natalie, you want to start? Sure. To kick it off, I've always been in media. Uh, I even at university, I was a publisher in a magazine. And so that just like always, I was a business major, marketing major, but I always like, what does that mean? And like marketing as a major means like 8,000 different things. But the focus on media was, was something that I gravitated to from the beginning. Um, when I got out of college, I started off at a ad agency and I like a media agency specifically. I like to think of agencies as at least my experience when I was there, it's a bit of a pressure cooker of opportunities of knowledge, you know, sharing and learning. Uh, and I, I really took advantage of that. I worked in strategy. I worked in digital investment. I worked in content. And I was able to kind of steward my, my way through different opportunities. Uh, from there, I jumped to NBC Universal, which I've been here for almost nine years. And I've had many different types of roles here. In From the perspective of mentorship, I think something that has been really helpful for me, knowing that I've only really been at two companies in my career in many different roles, I've mentorship to me has really been peer mentorship, finding my kind of tribe of men and women. I think I've inherently, you know, gravitated towards, um, towards women. However, men and women have been a part of my kind of peer mentorship bubble and really creating this kind of cohort and group of individuals that you can lean on for advice that can kind of help fill your cup and kind of pump you up. If there's something that you're feeling a little bit nervous or anxious about and just being an ear, I mean, and then that's been within my companies outside of my company as Patricia has turned into one of those types of people in that bubble. Uh, and, and that's really what's kind of helped me propel and, and, and push me forward in various stages of my career. That's fantastic. Um, we'll go a little bit deeper into the, the men, the male, female, and also the peer to peer in a little bit, but Patricia, how about you? Early on, I um, had a wonderful boss who ironically was a year younger. Sometimes people have difficulty working for people that are younger than them, um, but she was very buttoned up. Similar to Natalie, I got into the, the media space. Um, and essentially, one of the things that I learned from her was really, really keeping things buttoned up until you're ready to communicate anything out, having a communication plan. And she was ultimately one of the strongest leaders that I've ever had worked for. Um, and she turned into a mentor just because I wanted to emulate a lot of the, the qualities and characteristics that she had. So um, recently, less than a year ago, I was able to catch up with her over some champagne that she loved. And I was able to thank her. And I never really had an opportunity to do so young in my life. But 
Um, and similar to Natalie, mentorship was also men and women. I had a, a, my first media job out of college was a male CEO that helped me understand the business acumen, how to understand digital uh, advertising. And he was more of a, you'll figure it out. You know, sometimes you may not know it all at once, but eventually you're a smart woman, you'll get into it, you'll get better acclimated and you'll get, and it'll start to become your wheelhouse. And I was never, um, well experienced in a lot of the space that I entered, but the encouragement that I received from him early on in my career um, also helped me better I just trust myself when I walk into circumstances. And I still do that today where I feel, you know, I might not be the best suited in certain things, but I'll walk in, I'll figure it out and I'll, I'll move forward. And similar to Natalie, I'll find peers that I can support them and vice versa, but I'll ask questions. I'll do some research and and figure it out. So it was extremely important to me to have um, people to trust, especially when I needed to become vulnerable in areas that I wasn't feeling so great in. Um, and they really helped excel um, some of the ability for me to, you know, move on rather quickly. I think that the piece that I love about um, both of your stories, especially Patricia, your last comment that you just made is that whole notion of, um, so you, you asked for help. You didn't know, right. Especially even as a leader. And that's something you that's ingrained in you. And then by so doing that's a way of, you know, embodying that kind of curiosity completely gives you a great, you are a terrific role model for other people to emulate. And same thing with you, Natalie, actually, you know, saying yes to things that you may or may not even be ready for, but you're excited to at least give it a shot. And, you know, you you have enough confidence to know, hey, look, if I, you know, if for some reason I don't know what I know who to ask or I'll figure out who to ask. So to that end, dual mentorship, because I this is kind of a lead up to, I want to get a little bit later into the, your relationship, because I love, I love it. <laughs> us too <laughs> <laughs> but so you know do you think especially in this day and age we've got so many different generations in the workforce <clears throat> you've got gen z you know sort of leapfrogging some of the more boomer crew and millennial crew and yet then there's some you know sort of leadership acumen that they can also learn from the other group and so do you believe that that they're that mentorship is intrinsically reciprocal. Absolutely. I, I feel like it has to be. And I hope any good mentor approaches it in that way as a learning opportunity for them as, mu- as much as it is for the mentee, so to speak. I mean, I, I, I would say, I, for me, I see it as an op- as a men- if I'm a mentor to somebody, I would see, I see it as an opportunity for me to learn from them. I, I think I'm a millennial. So I think I'm kind of getting to the point now where there's Gen Z uh, people on my team or within NBC Universal overall that are experiencing things in different ways, responding to them maybe in different ways. And at, from my perspective, it's like, oh, well, maybe, you know, I'm the millennial, maybe would handle it a certain way. And, and I'm trying to take what experience I have and apply it to them or, or, or pivot my experience and pivot how I respond to something. Um, so I, I think absolutely it should be something that everyone should have in their mind in any, any interaction. I am learning from my seven and a half year old spunky little girl. Yes. And, you know, I think certain things, she said something to me yesterday that really resonated with me. And I said, wow, I really need to take a better look at how I behave because she might do something similar. So I'm learning from a seven-year-old and I think some of the younger, I hate to call them younger because I don't, I want to be part of the young crowd, but they are, they're, they're coming out of college. They have different experience. They're educating students differently. They're experiencing life differently from COVID and, and how we've transitioned into a much more remote lifestyle. And um, I think it's important for us to be quiet sometimes and listen more so that we can better understand what their needs are and how we can integrate better and support them as well. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you may not know everything all the time. Well, right. I mean, hopefully, because then that's <laughs> that's how we can all move forward, yeah. or at least have the you know have the self awareness, right, yeah. to know that you don't. To add add on to that, I the listening for sure. I think that's something that I can talk a lot. So I think that is something that I make a choice now, especially right now. I don't, we'll, we'll we'll talk about Patricia and I's experience with each other and how we met and, you know, 
babies and all of that stuff being working mothers. Um, but especially for me in the last like six or seven months since I've been back from leave, maternity leave, I, the, the listening has been like numero uno. However, I struggle with the balance of, of listening as well as kind of providing that you know, well, these are the current realities of the business and, you know, you need to listen, but we're also in the business world and being able to find that marriage of listening, having empathy, Absolutely. hearing anybody's perspective, but actioning it on a way that it gets the business done. It gets the work done. Um, I think everybody is working through that on a consistent basis and in, in endeavoring to be the kind of best version of themselves and how they respond to their team. Uh, but th for me, that's like very top of mind of how do I, how do I balance that? How do I make sure I'm doing right by what the business needs are, but also from the humanness of what is needed from the team? Yeah. You know, I was just, I spent the weekend with a number of um, business school professors and it was interesting to hear them talk because they're experiencing this as well. They've seen a massive shift in the way their student body interacts responds to the way the professors actually, you know, try and I will say run a classroom, you know, some of the, you know, cold calling kind of thing doesn't, doesn't play anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're not used to that. And it was interesting to hear their, you know, sort of their perspective and their shift. And uh, sadly, some of them were saying, all right, mic drop, I'm done. Wow. <laughs> and you're like, wow, huh? Probably not the tack to take, but the other piece that's so important with what you're both talking about too is, right, is that everybody can be a mentor. I mean, people are trying to get into college. You all went to go, you can explain to somebody how to do that. Um, so, okay. I want to talk a little bit about how you two got together uh, <laughs> because I think it's a really, it's a, it's a really important point. And I, you know, one of the things I want to dive into is how are some of the different ways that actually the media world has changed since both of you have joined, but other ways and forms and places that you can find mentorship, like such as groups outside of work. So Natalie, do you want to jump in and share that story? Sure. So Patricia and I met like a little over a year ago. She blew my pants off by going to a, like a, we, we joined this, um, this like local community kind of pool club together. And we were, it was just like a new members thing, a new members meetup. And she had a baby like what, two weeks, a week before I like my, I, I was that cocktail. It, <laughs> it, it, it blew my mind. I was like, wait, so you had a, and I was, I was very, very, pregnant. very pregnant. I was like, I was about to have the baby and I thought a month, but it was two weeks, maybe a week. I don't know. But I was just so I was just impressed by her just for not even showing up. Oh my yeah. god, exactly. And then we did know that we were both working moms, and so I'm like, oh, let's you know, both having baby girls. Like, let's uh, let's meet up. And um, then oh, we got coffee one day, and then we were just kind of like hanging out, talking, and then we just naturally started talking about our careers. I should remember Patricia just being like, oh wait, like. You, you, we were speaking like the same corporate language. Like we, like what's happening here? Like but you I'm understand that word. Like it was yes. just so, and I was just like, blah, 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 like, you know, talking about like, you know, shop talk media language. And she Up was front. just like, yes. yeah, she was just like, not, uh, mouth was drawn. It was really, it was really funny. And it was, um, and then it kind of, kind of kicked off our, our kind of dual relationship our like, you know, fun hanging out, like, you know, personal stuff, but then also kind of evolving into, um, you know, a very respectful, beneficial kind of corporate type of relationship. So, and that was, I guess, a year ago. And now we've had many hangouts, had a spa weekend, like get our kiddos together. <laughs> nice. And then I also text her for advice. <laughs> so do you think, do you think that you could, one can have that level of, I, Intimacy is the only word I can think of in it, but that kind of close relationship also within, you know, the work hallways, within the workplace and still have it be professional or does it get messy? I mean, we're a different company. So I think that's right. a little bit of a different line in it. I mean, but I think so. I mean, I, th I think it just depends upon how like intimately close you are in the work setting. I think if it's someone that's your direct report, I think they're 
might need to be a bit of, you know, a line there, but, but I think, I mean, I have close friends that I, that I have within NBC Universal. I've been there for so long. So kind of depends, I think on, on your, your role, but for sure. Right. In some capacity. And Patricia, what do you think? I mean, I'm just kind of curious, how do you feel that the whole like media realm has changed so that, I mean, I know it's changed broadly, but in terms of has there really been a shift in DEI? There's been so much talk about it. So, you know. I, I, have, I have found that um, Keenan specifically has done an exceptional job at transforming our initiatives internally. Um, previous to the last two years, we never had ERGs. Um, now we have about four of them. And I think that also helps build a community and some of that peer-to-peer -peer mentorship that we want to go back to, whether you're a part of the Latin community, the Black community. Um, and I think that builds a safe space for people to feel a little bit more comfortable with sharing some of the challenges that they face internally. Um, and I think too, I, I, I miss a, a close friend of mine that left to another company and I miss her dearly. She was kind of my back buddy that her, we know we spoke professionally and personally, and we shared a lot about it one another's lives. And um, I certainly think that that's feasible within the workplace. And I think what you need to do is make sure that you're sharing information that, you know, won't put you in a bad position, but I think ultimately you want to get in intimate with one another you want to say hey i really don't understand why we're doing this as a company or where where we're going moving forward and i think some of that relationship building both internally and externally is important um but in terms of shifting i think companies are you know you get criticized for walking the walk and you, and you get criticized if you don't yeah. so i think it's it's how you do it and how you engage employees and how you show value and and prioritize some of those initiatives that sometimes you know putting up a logo for pride month sometimes is re, re, resides well with some people. And sometimes they're like, well, what are they, are they really doing stuff in the community and how does their diversity be at the leadership level? And so I think some of that is important for companies to not just check the box in terms of what they're doing, but really make it, um, you know, something that they're, they're supporting full across all levels. And I would think too, that one of the ways one could figure out, Hey, are they really doing it or not? Is simple things like retention. People leave management. They yeah. don't necessarily leave the company or the money. So to that end, and that's where people feel that they can feel comfortable. So they're included and they belong, which means they can show up their whole self, good, oh. bad, and different. Can mentorship then be a way, a method in a, to help achieve balance? How so, Patricia? Well, I think I even, you know, going to um, Natalie's company, right? She's part of NBC. It's a massive organization. I think one of the things that I ask for her is to give me insights on something that's like a really well-oiled machine. How do you communicate internally? What are the systems that you leverage? You know, what are the gaps that you have? What challenges you face with that? And I think that was key for me to understand um, ultimately. Yeah. I mean, balance for me, it's, it's a choice that I make every day. So, and I think it's, you know, not to make this too much about working moms, but it's very much about no, who I am. It's a very real and important thing. It's, so I have three kids, uh, Patricia and I, I's path has, have crossed with our, with my third, her second, um, that just celebrated like a 13 months and 14 months, which is crazy. So it feels like they're moving on from babyhood. Um, but when I when I returned from maternity leave with my third, I I had a very different mindset. And that probably was because it was the third time around. But I, I'm a very like fast mover. I want to get great work done. I want to get it done quickly. Um, and but that said, when you move fast, things can get a little bit stressful and you can get a little bit and like taking a lot on your plate and all of that. So when I returned from maternity leave, I, I made a, a choice then and a choice every single day since of two main things. One, I, I need to have a balance from a time perspective, just from when I'm home, can I have dinner with my family? Like I'm really prioritizing that, but like like walking the walk and talking the talk, you know, doing both of them. And not only doing that for me, but setting the example for my team. Because if I'm doing it, then they should feel empowered to do that, whether they have kids or whether they have 
a class to do after after work or on a team or have a girlfriend or boy, like whatever it is, I, I, I also have that in my mind as well. But the other piece is just keep a clear mind. And that's something that I can sometimes struggle with and I can just overanalyze things over and over and over again. But keeping a clear mind and being able to just take a breath and just to work through things. And I think for someone like me, that's something I have to tell myself every day or I will forget it. And then I will build into um, letting things get to me. And, and I can tell you that I really focused on that. And the weight that I have lifted off of me is, is, is great. I, I feel like with the three kids, I've become a, a more mellow uh, mom, but more of a mellow leader. And I try to translate that to my team. If someone's coming in or a mentee or whoever it is, is coming in, getting worked up over something. You're just like, you got to, you got to take a breath. And I, it's hard, that's hard to do. <laughs> and I don't always do it, but I think that that piece is, has been really important for me. Well, and you probably also enjoy everything more. Mm-hmm. Right. For sure. Because you also realize, oh my gosh, I think is it Mark Twain, you know, half of the disasters I thought imagine were going to happen never do. Right. And how yeah. much I call it, I quickly realized early on that I was, you know, a creative crisis. Is this really a crisis or am I making it dramatic because I need a oh, little- You get a little paranoid. It's like, it's in your head. And I think there's a balance of a little bit of paranoia can I think like really get you driven and really get you, you know, like I like to say fortune favors the bold and you're just, you know, you can, you can go for it. Sometimes you'll fall on your face. Um, but like sometimes you get a little in your head and that's that once you go get too much of that, that's you're, you're gonna, you're not going to be successful. Yeah. Another thing that I've heard that I have found useful because I tend to, you know, right away, I got to go with that, right? I got to get it right down right away. I know the answer is, yeah. is um, respond versus react. And that's that, you know, the whole, I am the queen of writing the email sleeping on it. Yes. And that's, yes. And, that's, and that's a true thing because we, right? It's, 100%. We have all sent that email and went, wait, did I say, I didn't Ooh. And then the next yes. morning you're like, and I can <laughs> never figure out how do I retract it? How, how, how? <laughs> no one told that, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. You didn't know that, right? So, okay, so then what, to this end with, you know, the embodiment, et cetera, and sort of demonstrating uh, what it can look like. How can we senior leaders then make the room for the folks on the bench to step up? Of course, that gives us the opportunity to do the same thing. But, you know, how can we give them the courage to do it? Is it through assigning stretch assignments? Is it, I don't know, calling them on stuff? Um, I, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, I just, I think, echoing something that Patricia had said about, I think her, you were talking about your previous mentor and trust. And I think the big piece is like giving, trusting your team, trusting your high performers to really do the job and give them this, give them the, the, the tools that they need to kind of do the work, but ultimately kind of push them out of their comfort zone a little bit. And I I've had that with, this, with a few team members that I've worked with, as well as my boss with me of th they know, or I know that they're, they have the, the fundamental capability to do the job uh, and they need to be comfortable being a little bit uncomfortable and not knowing. And I think that is really that tipping point of when you really can can shine. I, I feel like looking back years ago when I would be working on a project and it'd be that point where I'm like, oh my gosh, everything, I don't know what, everything's up here. How is it going to land? And I would get so overwhelmed by it. But now through experience, I've learned that, well, when all those balls are dancing in the air and I'm working on a project, I know that I'm at the tip of it kind of all falling into place. And so I trust myself that like it'll land. And I'm kind of going through that with my team or anybody I interact with in this type of, of, um, of experience is you need to trust yourself that you're gonna figure it out. You've done it before. You need to kind of feel the uncomfortable. Uh, so I think giving them the room to do that, maybe kind of make the mistake sometimes and and then ultimately give them their voice to kind of communicate their successes, I think is really important. I think one of the things uh, you hit the nail on the head in terms of, you know, being 
getting comfortable with not being comfortable is really difficult concept for some people. And I think one of the the things that I've always tried to discuss when, when you're trying to get them to get uncomfortable is saying, you know, well, how is it that you like to learn? Do you like to follow? Do you need, like, how do you understand your learning style? And a lot of the times they come back and they're like, I don't really know. So for me, having a better understanding of if I get into a room and I just listen and get absorbed and then I can go back and ask questions or do some research and then resurface the conversation, that's kind of how I get comfortable, but not everybody's like that. And I think one of the things that I find to be super important is to grab some of the younger kids, whether they're high performers or not, and just say, hey, just come into the room and listen. Hey, there's a training going on. You want to sit in and learn? Or you're, yeah, you're not part of that team, but the, you know, 95 people are in the office are in that room. You can say, hey, can I join and just listen in and be a fly on the wall? I think that's the exposure that yeah. bringing other people to the table is going to help them get better exposure, get a better understanding, um, and make them feel comfortable with saying, hey, can I join? And I think a lot of the times they they don't feel just because they were invited or because, you know, they're not senior enough. I think that's where the, the, the debilitation starts where they're like, well, I don't really deserve to be in that room. And on, quite frankly, the more that you get them exposed, the better they'll get acclimated with whatever it is that they're focused on and then say, oh, I heard this in another conversation and now that makes sense or that resonates a little bit more. So bringing others to the table sometimes is helpful, but understanding what their learning styles are sometimes gets them thinking about, okay, what is it that I need to feel stronger or move forward or get better acclimated with what I'm doing? So I've I've experienced that for myself, but also when I've had other kids, younger adults come in and, and join teams and just learn. Well, the thing that's really interesting about that too is so often those folks are the very, very connective tissue. And mm. so by having them sit in that room, then it just, it, it, they're so much more impact um, impactful themselves just on every day. And to your point, they can hear something and say, oh, wait, have we ever thought of doing this? And they can also provide that sort of, I don't know, standing back and going, huh, I wonder, have we ever thought of this or thought of that or doing something a little bit differently? And that's the piece where I think sometimes senior leaders get irritated. Yeah. And I just beg everyone to remember, it's a question. They're, yeah. they're raising it because not to question your ability or authority, anything like that. They literally are just saying, huh, my mind doesn't work that way or I don't see it that way. Can you explain to me? that how you are seeing it it seems to me i also think that as leaders finding the people on the front line that are actually doing the work yes. they forget about at times where you say okay you have a product developer you have an engineer that's building it out you have a strategist that's talking to the client but did you ever talk to the actual person that are plugging in the data and the numbers and what would make their life easier or would make them want to use the platform i think having that synergy with a younger audience and bringing, helping others come up is, is something that a lot of times we miss. Oh, absolutely. It also improves all the system. Yeah. How you're able to iterate. So that's, that's a form of feedback. What's, what's one of the biggest ahas you have each had through feedback? Hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that is great to see that kind of response to that question. Yeah. Feedback. Uh -huh. uh, um, I, I'm sure Patricia has as well. I, I mean, at NBCU, there's various different kind of development trainings that they give us access to, which is amazing. And I've done a few, I've been lucky enough to do a few of them. And one of them that I did, there was a lot of, um, encouraged 360 feedback from like, from my boss, from my peers, from my, from direct reports, all anonymous, uh, and, and some of the feed, one piece of feedback, and I don't remember the full like verbatim, but like there was maybe like glowing feedback from everybody else. And then there was like one piece that like was dreadful, but it, it went into kind of, and this was a couple years ago now, I think it was an in-person one actually. So that kind of put the date pre, pre 2020. Um, but one of the pieces of feedback that I got was kind of connecting into like me moving so fast that like Natalie can, um, you know, that, that she's kind of decisive and, and moves fast and strategic, but she may not make the time to listen or to kind of stop and wait or wait for people to catch up if they're not moving at my speed. Um, and the way that it was worded was like very direct, but I'm just like, oh, 
Yes. And like, like I've been talking about earlier, it's something that I make a conscious effort to be aware of every day because that is my not natural tendency. My tendency is to go and to move. My tendency is it. I'm never going to evolve in my career as a leader if I don't do that. So it was again, years ago and very much an aha for me. And I don't know who the person was, but uh, (laughs) it was a very, I sat on it for a while, (laughs) swallowed, but then acted because you need to. Yeah. And how about you, Patricia? Um, it was recent in my new role and it was um, that I need to be more aggressive because I think one of the areas that I always tend to gravitate to is making people feel comfortable, included. Yeah. Um, you know, I set, tend to crack a joke to lighten the mood a little bit and make people feel a little bit less tense. Uh, I'm not really great with silence. Silence is like a soul killer for me when we're all waiting. I'm like, does nobody else have anything to say? Like, how was your weekend? Oh, that's all- <laughs> But I think, you know, having um, more authority in my request and saying, you know, this is due by end of day. Is there anything that, you know, might prevent you from getting this to me on time versus I need this by the end of the day? You know, please let me know what obstacles you might have, but this is the deliverable end date. And I, and I tend to gravitate more to a softer side, which I think it can make me a little bit more, um, I don't know, I'm almost like a Linda Yaccarino where she's much more buttoned up and she's put together and she's, I'm sure she asks for something and she gets it. So um, I'm going to be, try to become more like Linda Yaccarino. <laughs> so I had a bad sales at NBCU. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I love that you and I had totally opposite pieces of feedback pretty much. And we found our ways together, that, <laughs> but that's like a very like harmonious, beautiful thing. Cause it, you know, it's not necessarily saying that, you know, you're always with your people. It's kind of a opposite, opposites attract type of situation. And the truth is sometimes the opposites attract is how you can hear. There are certain opposites that you're actually able to hear and witness and then make the change, the shift. Yeah. And others, it is just yeah. grating. Yeah. So, all right. Last question, one and all. Uh, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your younger self? There's a lot of tasty tidbits. I mean, I I think ultimately just trust your gut, you know, and it's 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 going to work out. I think, you know, you you'll yeah, I think when it comes down to it, like the trust your boldness, like you're you're going to figure it out, you're going to mess up a little bit along the way, but it's you're you you know allow yourself to move through it. I, I think the trust piece for me. I think I would have ironically the feedback that I got is being more aggressive, but I would have told myself to be even more aggressive when I you know like you know you wanted to find financial stability and coming from um, you know a mother that didn't graduate high school and a, a father that didn't go to college and he started working and the one thing that they both had taught me was just find financial stability by yourself. So you don't have to depend on anyone and you could live your own life and make your own choices. And I think, you know, just having a job and graduating college and getting something was great because for them, that was the growth that they anticipated and just finding that financial stability, but even more so I could have, you know, gone even harder and, and, and done even more so. And I think our last conversation, I said, take the trip by the shoes, but I think (laughs) the the other thing is, you know, don't, just because you achieved what you got doesn't necessarily mean that it should end there and just check the box, you know, what, what else and what else can you get and what's next on your journey. And I think having those goals and milestones to hit is important, but I would have told myself like, keep going. Like you, you, the sky is the limit. You could do so much. And I think maybe I should tell myself now that too. So we just did, we just saw you. Ha ha. (laughs) And, And, you know, it really is. I think that's a great point is, we always talk about, oh, we're ever growing, we're ever curious. Well, that key piece, that plays into that whole notion that it's a journey and you've you've only just started, you've only just begun in a lot of ways. And once you've done it, it's like, uh, it can be exhausting, but I think it is so important, especially for those all around us to witness leaders such as yourself continuing and continuing and continuing, not exhaustive because then we don't, we get out of balance. But I think also having the courage to choose what it is you want to do and because you want to do it, not because it makes sense, not because it's in your career path, not because someone else tells you, 
It could be everything from climbing Kilimanjaro to perhaps hello being in a live theater production. <laughs> so it all it all depends. Well, listen, Natalie, Patricia, thank you both, both, both so much. Um, once again, never disappoint, but really so. And it it's also so heartening to see and just the way the story unfolded between the two of you. And um, I honestly, I see mini me, I mean, not me, huh. mini me. I see the two of you. <laughs> I, there's, there is, even though you're, you're opposites of the same coin, you're really not, there's other parts. So I think it's um, really terrific. And well, I know you're going to so read. much. Oh, my pleasure. Always, always, always. Yeah. And just so appreciative of everything you're doing. And if um, both sons and daughters are <laughs> so lucky to have you as moms and we're all lucky to have you as leaders in our realms who are then determining how media comes to be so thank you so important. much all right until our paths cross again thanks <laughs>